I'm Tim Herrera with the Sacramento County Office of Education here with another Teacher of the Year profile. Right now we're speaking with Daniel Crenshaw who is one of two Teachers of the Year from the Sacramento City Unified School District. Thanks for joining us. Absolutely. All right, now, so you teach at Rosemont High School and you teach Integrated Math 2 and Math 3. Yes. What is Integrated Math? What does that mean? Integrated Math is taking all the different subjects that traditional high school students remember. Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2, Trigonometry, Statistics, and they, they put them all together in one class. And the kind of idea behind that is to um, help students build connections between all the different subject materials and see how math is really a connected thing and not just a, a process that you learn a million skills with. So are you also talking about how it might reflect on chemistry and science as well or just the, math, the other math subjects? Uh, it's, it's more the other math subjects. I mean, that, that's kind of always the goal. Um, it's very hard to accomplish, but there are um, word problems where, where the sciences are mixed in. Um, and, and it's a, it's a, it, the curriculum that we use is a, is a big look at um, real world application of the math as well. And so there's, there are a lot of word problems in science is kind of a big part of, of those word problems, but not directly taught, no. Okay, so you used the phrase real world application. So as a mm -hmm. math teacher, I'm sure you've heard the phrase, when am I ever going to use this? That's right. right? Mm -hmm. So you show them. Yeah, we, we try. The, the, the curriculum is, uh, it, it's, it's fun. It's, it's, you have to um, be a little more creative than what the curriculum gives you, though, because the, the students don't necessarily have connections to, to everything that the book has. But, um, uh, but yeah, that is a very common question and my very common answer as well on the next test. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you were talking about uh, creativity in, in, in teaching the math and, and showing how there are practical applications to it. Can you give me an example of something that, that you might have done in a past lesson where you've shown a student how you would use it in, in, in real life? Um, you know, the, the, the skills that we teach kind of at this level, it has such a kind of broad stroke of, of, of skills. And um, the, the level that I teach at is, is kind of beyond your everyday use. And so the, the, you know, the calculating a tip when you go to a, a restaurant or, or making sure that you're, you're, when your register rings up 20% off, it's correct. I mean, we're a little bit kind of past that at the high school level. And so, um, the, the connections really come from um, taking, taking prior knowledge that you, you teach the students and, um, and, and showing them how to connect that to the new material that they're learning. And, and the new materials is just, it's, it's so abstract and, and they feel like it's so fancy that they, they get excited about that and that's kind of where their motivation comes into. Um, and so, so that's kind of why there are these, these math practice standards um, that are kind of um, part of the curriculum that we teach. And, mm -hmm. and the, the practice standards are asking students to strive to be problem solvers and make sense of things and, and construct viable arguments um, with their peers. And so it's, it's um, the real world application is, is um, kind of left behind in a sense, unless you get real um, uh, specific and you kind of, you're, you're able to, you know, take a programming class or, or something like that. So you tell students, be on time and be ready to meet expectations. Mm -hmm. Why is that important and, and, and how do they respond to that? I mean, because or a lot of them want to be on their own schedule and not realizing they've got to kind of snap to, to, to learn. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that, uh, what, what I tell them is, is really to kind of let them know that I mean business when they walk into my class and, and that they are going to have to, every student will have to perform and no student will hide in my class. And so that's kind of how I, um, I set the tone, if you will. Um, and I'm sorry, I kind of lost the question. No, but when you, when you tell them to be ready to meet expectations, mm -hmm. you're, you're raising the bar for them and you're telling them, you know, come in ready to learn um, this is a time for work and not play, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and you have to you have to set that 
um, and, and then kind of building off of that, you have to have kind of set procedures um, for, for them to understand and for them to follow so that, so that you can maximize your, your class time because of, of the 52 minutes that you get with them a day is, is, is all you get with them. And, and if you want them you know, to be problem solvers, that's, that's not a lot of time. So how do you motivate these kids, especially the ones that are really hard to motivate? Uh, you, you motivate them through success. That's that's been my my best stab at it, if if you will. The the if if you can if you can kind of turn on a light bulb for a kid and they can understand and and that they are capable of of doing what you're asking them to. You you kind of harness that and you 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 feed off of that and you, you write your next lesson plan so that the student is able to kind of um, go back to that prior knowledge that they're really confident in um, and, and you show them that and you give them ability to make the connection to the new concept that you're trying to teach and uh, just just doing that um, kind of will help those lower kids who aren't very you know um, they don't have a high level of confidence. It, if you if you can celebrate that success and kind of harness that for for future lessons, it, it really just kind of brings everybody up and and um, kind of creates the culture in your class that that we can do this. And confidence is the key to learning. Yes, absolutely. And without confidence, learning is really difficult. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you you feel like you you uh, and, and that's and, and big thing in math too. If you if you feel like the answer is 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 what you're trying to get to, then um, then you're going to fail because you're going to make mistakes and you're going to get wrong answers and you're going to beat yourself up about it and so um, absolutely confidence but it 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 also comes in in understanding that hey this is this is a I'm learning right now and, and my partner is learning right now and we're all learning right now and and mistakes are okay and it's really about the process that that we're taking to get there so um, while, while confidence is extremely important and it'll, it'll kind of help the synergy in your class move forward, um, it's, it's just kind of getting away from the answer getting as far as math is concerned. So, so while maybe getting the math concepts is hard, is it also hard for them to get the concept of making mistakes or is okay? Yes. Yeah. That's, it's, it's incredible how, how we've kind of drilled that into kids. It's, it's amazing. And, and you know, the, the Common Core shift is, is supposed to be the, the, the new age of students who have experienced Common Core throughout their entire educational career is supposed to be coming through here soon. And so I'm excited to see if that, if that has changed at all, if the, if the answer getting, uh, I have to get this answer, is, is changing. I, I'm, I really hope it is. It's because it is a battle. I bet. How long yeah. have you been teaching? Uh, this is, this will be my eleventh year. So, uh, what changes in education? Well, for, as you as a teacher, was it mm -hmm. harder in the beginning? For being a teacher. Being a oh my goodness. Was yes. it hard? Oh my gosh, yeah, yeah. The if if yeah if if you don't have the the correct amount of support, um, if you don't have a good leader, um, if if you're you, you you get put in a bad position to to really kind of fail as a teacher and it's it is a hard job and I um, for the first four almost five years of teaching I was just I was like I can't do it I cannot do this and um, and then it, it it all changed with with when I had one just amazing leader and one one principal that that was like hey this is this is how it's done and and like public education works and she she built a team around me that like really supported me and just I was able to take off from there and and now I love it so so like n not only was confidence important for your students mm -hmm. to learn it was important for you to succeed as a teacher <laughs> absolutely yeah yeah because yeah, if you, you just feel like you're failing if when when you go home and and you didn't do anything but try to try to get the kids under control and and you didn't get through your curriculum and it's just like you you really feel like you're failing and so um the, the knowledge and the support, I think, is extremely important for, for teachers to have. So now here you are, a teacher of the year. Yeah. What does that feel like? It feels amazing. It's, it's a really neat process. It's, um, it's, it's just really cool to, to, to have people that have uh, inspired you and kind of helped you along your way. You know, you get text messages from all of them and Facebook messages and congratulations. And it's, mm -hmm. it's a really cool feeling to, to, um, to be recognized. For, for all the hard work that you do and um, 
and now a lot of pressure to to <laughs> do a really good job next year. So I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited for next year to start. Well, congratulations to you. Thank we you. We appreciate your time. We've been speaking Absolutely. with uh, Daniel Crenshaw, who is one of two teachers of the year for the Sacramento City Unified School District. Thanks for joining us. Absolutely. Thank you.